And now we can look at this bit, which again is something we've looked at before. It's a way of using a keyboard to control both the envelope of the sound and its pitch. Um, so in this case we're using a, an M2F object, which is MIDI to frequency, to control the frequency of a cycle object. And then that's running into the multiplication object, which is being controlled by the envelope, which is being triggered in turn by the velocity output of uh, the case slider when we hit a key. As it happens, we could also connect this uh, button to this side because messages are being sent out of both outlets at the same time. Um, so how might we attach this? kind of uh, idea to a sample. Now this is going to be very useful to those of you who do want to build a sampler in Max. Um, so in this case what we want is a, key, a keyboard, or keyboard or a case slider to control the pitch of an SF play object. And this is slightly more complicated perhaps because um, we don't have an explicit frequency for your sample when it's loaded into SF play it will be the, the pitch that the sound is that you recorded. So what we really want to do is to, uh, to establish a relative pitch for that sample. And usually the convention is that a, uh, the middle C is the original pitch of the sample, and then obviously as you go up, then it will transpose the, the sample upwards and make it quicker and shorter, and lower, lower keys will, will transpose it down. So how do we do that? Well, um, actually I'm going to copy a chunk of this because much of this we're going to need. So I'll copy it all across to here. So first of all let's deal with the envelope again. Uh, too much rubbish. Um, and so here we are going to integrate the envelope into the patch just as we did before. So this is essentially what we did last time. Um, but what do we have here? So let's have a look at this uh, balloon down here. What we're aiming to do is to use um, the case slider to somehow transpose the sound as I said before. And of course the right hand inlet of SF Play controls the speed which is essentially transposing the sound. Uh, so we want to find some way of connecting these things up um, so that they do what we want them to do. And this balloon says you can change the speed pitch of SF play by sending a value to its right hand inlet. A value of 1 plays at normal speed, a value at 0 0.5 plays at half speed, so that's an octave below, and a value of 2 plays at double speed, so an octave above. So what we want is for the middle C to trigger a number 1, for uh, the C below middle C to trigger a 0 0.5, C above middle C to trigger a 2, and so on. Now you could do that um, by ass laboriously assigning each of these notes a, um, a value that will uh, transpose appropriately, but actually we can do that much more easily by uh, making use of M2F again. So we've established that M2F converts a MIDI to a frequency, so let's have a look at what frequency we get for each of those notes. Um, if I click on C, then we get a value of 261.6258. If I click on the C below middle C, we get a value of 130.81279. If I click on the C above middle C, we get a value of 523.25116. What's the relationship between all of those numbers? Well, 523.25116 is twice what we had at middle C. Uh, the C below middle C is half what we had at middle C. Um, and so if we compare this with this, uh, then um, we can see that there is a relationship there. Um, so how do we get uh, C to uh, the frequency of C, which is 261.62558, to yield somehow a value of 1 that we can send to SF play? Uh, well, we do that simply by dividing the number by itself. 261.62558. And that will give us a number. Of 1. 
Um, and conveniently, if we hit uh, the C above middle C, then we get 523.25116, which divided by our reference pitch, which is uh, 261.6558, or our re reference frequency, uh, we get a value of 2, which is the ratio that we want in order to play uh, an octave above. And same with uh, an octave below. So that's doing exactly what we want. It's a simple calculation uh, based on our friend MIDI frequency, um, and that now does what we wanted. So I can connect that to SF Play. I can connect, uh, well, any of this bit to the button object just to get that sound to trigger, and it should work for us. Um, so now we have a kind of diatonic transposition for our sample. Um, so that's a couple of ways in which you can use SF Play. There are many, many more. One thing I haven't shown you, by the way, very quickly, is that SF Play will accommodate more than just our um, two channels. Um, it will, in fact, accommodate, for example, eight channels or 16 channels or, in fact, 64 channels. Uh, each of those channels output, uh, gives us a uh, separate output. I'm not sure how many channels it will actually accommodate. Let's try. No, it doesn't. I think 64 is our maximum, but that's not bad. Um, and uh, you know, might allow you to do some interesting things with multi-channel if that interests you. Um, so, there we go.